Sometimes it seems as though movements just appear out of nowhere. This is almost never the case. Movements take time and effort, but sometimes that's just pushed aside. Today, we'll be exploring where countercultural movements come from and why they come about. All movements share common roots, and these roots can be found in the foundations of the very movement that started our country, the American Revolution. Now, since you guys have taken U.S. history, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, the language of liberty. A common thread for movements such as modern feminism, gay liberation, punk, and even Wicca is a need for freedom of expression that society deems wrong. Feminist activism, as we know it, began with the suffragettes. But after the 19th Amendment, feminism died down. It was revived in the 60s on the heels of the civil rights movement. Basically, women in activism began thinking, we are fighting for rights, but we're still being treated badly by our male peers? What's with that? And then came Betty Friedan and the problem with no name. Betty Friedan, in her book, The Feminine Mystique, spoke of how women were unsatisfied with being housewives. These women couldn't describe their feelings, hence the problem with no name. But Friedan gave it a name, The Feminine Mystique. The Feminine Mystique, as Friedan describes it, is the unattainable societal expectation that women find fulfillment in being a housewife and that truly feminine women don't desire a career outside the domestic. Now that the problem had a name, a lot of women were able to wake up and realize that there is a reason that they're unhappy. Women took to the streets with the National Organization of Women and more radical organizations. The feminists fought for Equal Pay Act, spoke out against sexism and sexual politics, and battled for legalized abortion. Women were finally standing up for their right to be able to live freely. Around the same time, another group was fighting for the same thing. The gay liberation movement began with the Mattachine Society, a group of gay men who believed the path to equality was through assimilation. Now, not everyone felt this way. It was still legal to be gay or trans in the 60s, and LGBT people were being heckled by police raids on gay bars. Finally, on June 28, 1969, enough had been enough at the Stonewall Inn. The Stonewall riots had been the first times the LGBT community fought back against police raids. This movement was not about assimilation. It was about the right to exist and live equally. Trans women such as Sylvia Rivera and Marsha P. Johnson were key figures in the Stonewall riots. A year after the Stonewall riots, the first Pride Parade took place, a tradition that lasts to this day. Punk began in the mid-70s in the U.S., U.K., and Australia. Punk was a complete rejection of mainstream and embraced anti-establishment lyrics. Punk was a very do-it-yourself movement, with bands self-producing records and doing their own distribution. Without the punks of the late 60s and 70s, we wouldn't have bands such as Nirvana, Green Day, The Cure, and Pearl Jam. Modern Wicca began in England in the early 1900s. It was spread by Gerald Gardner in the 1950s. Wicca uses pagan traditions and practices and rejects religious norms by being very individualistic. Instead of focusing on a deity, like most religions, Wicca focuses on the self, and this manifests in the ways of the god and goddess, which are representations of male and female energy. So, with all these movements going on around the same time, it would be pretty wild if they didn't intersect. Queercore is radical punk mixed with gay identity and a rejection of the hardcore masculine heterosexual punk of the 1980s. My philosophy of homosexuality has always been to embrace the things that make you different, to embrace the criminality of homosexuality. The movement started with Bruce Le Bruce, who was rejected by mainstream punk for being gay and the mainstream gay movement for being punk. Queercore is a movement for those who are outcasts for being gay and different. Us to step back from the really narrow definition that people in the last century have imposed upon it and open itself back up to what it used to be. Well, I think the gay punk rock movement was brave enough to admit that. Hey, f you, we're pissed off. This is the new feminism, and uh, this is how we're doing it now. And if you don't like it, f my. F you can push me, no stare down, plug it. Diana Wicca is a feminist sect of Wicca. It is an all-female, women-centered theology that focuses on women's mysteries. It also focuses on just the goddess, rather than both the god and goddess, like typical Wicca. It is not for a separation between male and female, but Diana Wicca seeks to embrace the differences in a female-centered religion. Having knowledge of countercultural movements gives us a broader worldview. Without punk, where would our culture be musically? Without feminism and gay liberation, where would society be socially and politically? Without Wicca, how would Americans view alternative religions and also who would be demonized for our movies? The
point is, these movements have all influenced modern society in ways we still might not know. And sure, sometimes it feels like these kinds of things spring up out of nowhere. But sometimes you just gotta look at the roots.